All right, hey guys. Hope you're enjoying the video series we've been making um, on the GCC Fencing Club Facebook page. Today we're going to be answering Grant's question about uh, body manipulation. So a lot of you guys kind of know what that is. We've gone through that a little bit in class. But basically what we'll do today is we'll just kind of take you through the basics of that, remind you of it a little bit, and then we'll just kind of play with it and see all the stuff that you guys can do with that. Okay? Now, before we get started, um, I should just say, kind of disclaimer, that body manipulation assumes that you have a good understanding of playing sides with the blade. So if you don't understand playing sides, then you know review that. Maybe we'll make a video about that too. But make sure you understand that before you decide to start throwing your body around. Because if you don't know where your blade is, putting your body in, in odd positions is not going to do any good. All right. Okay. So assuming that you understand playing sides with your blade, let's get started. So normally, Andy and I are fencing. We get opposite each other on the strip. Right on guard, ready to ready fence, right? This is what he sees, right? Nice and neutral, right? So, just like this, right? You look at me, there's really nothing that's more or less attractive than the rest of it. This side, this side, right? It's completely neutral. Every position has an equal percentage of getting hit, right? So Andy sees that, right? And that's all well and good, right? That's the strength of a good classical on guard position, right? That Andy cannot look at me and say, oh, he's, you know, weak over here, so I'm going to attack over here, and then I get hit, and I get hit, and I get hit. Or the same thing on the other side. He can't say that because I'm in a good neutral position, right? So starting here is great. But what you want to be able to do from there is play with it and change it a little bit so that you can actually start to manipulate him. That's why we call it body manipulation instead of reacting to him. Because if I never move from here, I'm always going to be reacting to what he does. I'm not going to be controlling what he does. And then he's about control. So we're going to start with six. We'll start with blade or with body manipulation in six. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer myself. I'm going to start on. He's going to be on this side of my blade, right? So this is where playing sides comes in. He's going to be on this side of my blade, and I'm going to transfer my body from facing him head on in neutral position to opening up slightly, dropping my blade slightly, so that this position is open more and it's more attractive to him to attack. Okay, so that's what he's seeing. That's what the opponent is seeing. So we're fencing. That's what I do. I open up slightly. I drop my blade slightly. Okay. Now notice that's the only thing that I've done, right? I'm still in distance because I want the pair of recos, right? We're fencing, and he sees that even just for a split second. There he goes, right? Now you see how I put my blade in a position to get a specific kind of parry, right? It does not work for me to be here to open myself up and to use a normal six beat because I'll pull it into myself, right? So when you guys are doing this, you have to remember that if I'm here, your parry is going to change a little bit. You're not going to do anything crazy with your hand. You're still going to rotate your palm to the outside, all that good stuff, but your angle is going to change. If, I, if you look at me doing this, I don't know if you can see his blade very well, but I'm actually taking him up and out, right? See where he is? Right, because I don't, because I've opened this hole, right? I don't want him fitting inside my hole, right? That's the whole point, right? I have opened up my position, and if I don't use it correctly, it ends up being a hazard for me rather than something that helps me. So, I open up, so I rotate slightly forward, I don't completely open myself up, open myself up slightly, take my blade from here to here. I'm on his four side, he's on my six side, he comes, I pair Okay? So, that's kind of the most basic form of it. Okay? Now let's say that, you know, you use that a couple times, your opponent gets wise, right? You know, okay, he's right there, he's got that, it's easy, right? And he's not going to fall for that. Okay? That's where you can start bringing distance and forward, backward body manipulation into the picture. Right? So now we've gone from just giving him this, opening up the position, now we're going to add a lean in, a lean out, a little bit more room with the blade, right, all kinds of stuff, and it'll depend on what he's doing, okay, but let's say he gets smart with that, right, so what I'm actually going to do, if I really want him to get, like I said, here's where I talk about, right, everyone has a button, right, that you can push, everyone has something that if you give them it, they just, they have to jump back right now. Andy's been fencing long enough that his buttons are really, really, really small, right? But you'll fence people where, you know, you'll get this close to them, 
and they'll just be like, oh, I've got to attack. Okay, so use that, right? So if I want Andy, like, I'll, I'll take my blade out of the picture for a second, okay? So blade's gone, okay? If I get this close to him and he attacks, right, I can still get out of him. Now that's because I have good distance control, but look at how close I am right now, right? So if he just extended, right, I'm, at, I'm right at the edge of his extension distance, but I can still, go ahead, I can still get out of the way. So when I add my blade to that, right, so I rotate, and I open with my blade, but I also shift my weight, shift my foot a little bit. So now when he comes, I can do that. Right, so two different things. Right, I dropped down, I didn't just drop back, and I also pulled myself back a little bit. Right, so we've gone from, so here's the first thing that we did. Right, first thing was rotate, open, he comes, simple pair repose, nothing moves. Version number two, open, rotate, lean, pull, and protect, right? So see where he is, right? So even if he was to bring his tip down and in, right, the only way he could do that is to be right here, and I have this protected. If he keeps coming this way, he's beyond me, okay? So that's version number two. Um, version number three, version number three would start to deal with second intention a little bit. So we can play with that. I'll just show you guys that real quick. We can play with second intent a little bit. Let's say that Andy gets really, really smart, which he is, okay? And he sees this, right? So imagine you're the opponent right now, and you see this, right? Smart ones among you who have seen this are thinking, oh, he wants to parry here, so what do I give him? I give him his parry, but then I disengage, right? Right here. That's what you guys are thinking, right? That's what Andy's thinking. So let's say that I know that Andy's smart. And I know that he's going to think two steps or three steps ahead rather than just one. So believe it or not, I can adapt my body position in two ways simultaneously to use that and to draw the disengage with, while still protecting myself. So here's what I'm going to do. You guys have to watch this closely. Okay? I'm going to rotate and open, right, keeping that same distance. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it just a little bit more. Right, I'm going to make it so obvious that he has to smell a rat. Right, does that make sense? Right, I'm making it so obvious that he thinks, oh, he really, really wants that parry. So I'm going to disengage it. Okay? But that's not all I'm going to do. I'm going to make it really obvious. But I'm also going to pull my lower target just a little bit. Right? That's a very subtle difference. I'm just shifting my weight slightly. I'm going to open this, I'm going to open this with my blade, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than it was before, and I'm going to pull this back, which means that when he comes, I'm already protected. All I have to do is shift my weight, and he's already not going to hit me. Now, if I hadn't done that, if I had just said, no, I want him in six, right, then he disengages, yeah, then I'm stuck, right, because that's what he wants. He wants, I go for six, I miss, he hits me. But I'm thinking three steps ahead, and I say, okay, rotate, open, a little bit bigger than normal, pull this back, he comes. I've got it. Okay, so that's version number three, and we can do those with all of the body positions. So that was just six. So it's not something you can do six now. Again, we could say, okay, double disengage, triple disengage, right? You know, we start to play with some, you know, I know that he knows, and I know that he knows, right? But on a very basic level, right? Version one. Open, just slightly, move the tip just slightly, he comes, I take him up and out. Version number two, open slightly, come forward a little bit, pull the distance, very repose. He gets smart, I know he's going to disengage, so I open, I pull here, he comes, very repose. Okay, so that's body manipulation in a nutshell for six. Okay, so we can go through some of the other body positions as well. But that's just in six, and especially for lefty righty, six becomes a big, big spot that you're going to play with. So, what you guys are doing over the summer, if you want to just get in front of a mirror and do what I'm doing right now and look at yourself, right? See how much this is open, how much this is closed, right? Learn to know your body while you're fencing by looking at yourself in the mirror so that you don't overextend, whatever, put yourself in a bad position when you're fencing. So, you can do this at home without having a partner. So really try to work on that. It'll be a big, really, really, really important part of your fencing.